In this video, we're going to discuss graphing exponential functions. So exponential functions are in the form of f of x equals a times b to the x power, where a is your initial amount and a cannot equal zero, and b is your constant ratio that you're multiplying by, and b must be a number greater than zero, which means b must be positive, and b also cannot equal one. Now the reason a can't equal zero is because think about it, we're multiplying here. So if one of our numbers is zero, then the answer is always gonna be zero, and then what's the point? And the reason b can't be one is because one to any power is always one, and any number times one equals itself. So once again, you would always end up with the same output, no matter what the input is. So we're going to be covering the four different types of graphs you could have when you graph exponential functions. So one kind of graph is above the x-axis, which means all of the y values are positive, and you could see that it is moving upwards from left to right. So this graph is an increasing positive exponential function. And again, it's positive because it is above the x-axis, which means all the y values are positive, and increasing because it is moving upwards from left to right. We can also have a positive exponential function that moves downward from left to right. And so you can see that it is decreasing, and it's still positive because it's above the x-axis, so this is a decreasing positive exponential function. We also have negative exponential functions, which are below the x-axis, which means that all of the y values are negative. And so this, notice how the graph is moving lower as we move from left to right. So this would be a decreasing negative exponential function. And then the other one would move upward from left to right, but still be below the x-axis, meaning that all the y values are negative. So this would be an increasing negative exponential function. So the first example we're going to look at is the increasing positive exponential function. You see here that the function is f of x equals 2 to the x power. And you might be thinking about how I told you that the function is f of x equals a times b to the x power. And you might be thinking, well, well, there's only one number there. Is that a or is that b? Well, this 2 is actually b because it is to the x power and b is to the x power. And so you might be thinking, well, where's a? Well, a is actually the invisible number 1, right? So f of x equals 2 to the x power, you could write it out as 1 times 2 to the x power. So our a value would be 1 and our b value would be 2. Now, in order to have a positive exponential function, an exponential function that graphs above the x-axis, your a value needs to be a positive number. So a must be greater than 0. And what makes this function an increasing function is that the b value must be greater than 1. And that is how we get a positive increasing function. If the a value is positive and if the b value is greater than 1. So we see here that our a value is a 1, so it's positive, and our b value is a 2, so it is greater than 1. So that is why this is an increasing positive exponential function. So if we look at this table of values for the function f of x equals 2 to the x power, we can see they've already been worked out for us. Where x is negative 1, that means we have 2 to the negative first power. Remember the negative on an exponent means reciprocal. So 2 to the negative first power is the reciprocal of 2, which is 1 half or 0.5. Anything to the 0 power equals 1. So 2 to the 0 power is 1. 
Anything to the first power equals itself, so 2 to the first power is 2, and 2 squared is 4. And so we look over at our coordinate plane and we see that these points have been graphed. So negative 1, comma, 0.5, 0, comma, 1, that's our y-intercept, 1, comma, 2, and 2, comma, 4, and it forms this curve. Now notice that this curve has arrows at both ends, and that's because it could go on forever in both directions. On the positive side, I could keep adding more positive values of x, and this curve would continue to rise upward, okay? And on the negative side, I could keep adding more negative values of x, and this curve will keep lowering and getting closer and closer to the x-axis, but it will never touch the x-axis exactly or go below. And the reason for that is the x-axis is a y-value of 0. The only way to make 0 when you're multiplying is by multiplying by 0. So if we were to add more negative values for x to this function, we would continuously get smaller and smaller decimal numbers, which would definitely be closer to 0, but it would never equal exactly 0. And this curve on the left end would never go below the x-axis into negative territory, again, because the only way that we can have negative numbers is if we're multiplying by a negative number, and this is not a negative number, this is a positive 2. So this line will never go below the x-axis either. Now, one of the things we need to be able to do is to describe the behavior of this graph. How is it moving? So let's look at the right end of this graph. I've already discussed how we could continue increasing the x values forever. And if we look, since it's curving upwards, what happens when we increase the x values? We also increase the y values, and that can happen forever. So the way that we describe that is we say, as x approaches, so we draw this arrow, positive infinity, which is like a sideways 8. So as we continue to increase our x values, and we can do that forever, as x approaches positive infinity, what's happening to our y values? Well, our y values are also increasing. So they are also approaching positive infinity. On the other end, on the left side, we could also keep decreasing our x values forever. So the way we write that is we say as x approaches negative infinity, that just means we keep decreasing our x values and we can do that forever what happens to our y value. Now, why, we don't say y approaches negative infinity because as I discussed before, this curve is never actually going to be exactly zero. It's never gonna hit exactly this x-axis because even though we'll get closer and closer, it'll never be exactly zero because we're not multiplying by zero and it will never go below. So we can't say that y approaches negative infinity. What happens on the end of the curve where it gets closer to the x-axis is we say y approaches zero. So as our x values increase for infinity, our y values also increase for infinity. And on the other end, as our x values decrease for infinity, our y values approach zero. They get closer and closer to zero. All right, so let's take a look at this example here. And I encourage you to pause the video and try to fill out this table and find these values yourself. So we have f of x equals 3 times 4 to the x value, and we see here that our a value this time is 3, and our b value is 4. So we know this is going to be an increasing positive graph. It's going to have that shape that curves upward above the x-axis. So let's go ahead and work this out. Now remember, when you are calculating and you have multiplication and exponents, you do exponents first. So for example here, where I have 3 times 4 to the x power, where x is negative 1, this kind of looks like this. So 3 times 4 to the negative first power, and the negative first power is the reciprocal, so this becomes 3 times 1 fourth, which equals 3 fourths or 0.75. but you do exponent first, then multiply. So you would not do three times four is 12 and then get the reciprocal of that. That is not the correct order to do that in, okay? But 
I would say to you, go ahead and use your calculator and use the exponent function on your calculator to fill out this table. But when x is zero, anything to zero is the is one. So three times one is three. When x is one, four to the first power is four, and three times four is 12. And when x is two, four to the second power is 16, and three times 16 is 48. So now that we've completed our table, we can go ahead and graph our points. So we have negative one comma 0.75. So here's negative one. And this is kind of strange, right? This is counting by seven and a half. So zero, seven and a half, 15. So negative one comma 0.75, that's gonna be really close here to the X axis because they're counting by so much for each grid line. Zero comma three. So if this is 7.5, three is gonna be about here. Zero comma three, and that's our Y intercept, okay? Zero comma three. One comma 12, so this is 15, so 12 is gonna be a little bit before below that. And two comma 48, if this is 45, 48 is gonna be a little bit above that. And so here, is our curve. Well, I totally missed that dot, but you guys get the point how that works. Here's our curve. We put our arrows on both ends. And now let's go ahead and describe the behavior. So just like the first example, we see that on the right end, as our X values increase, our Y values increase, and this can go on forever. So the behavior of this is, as X approaches positive infinity, Y approaches positive infinity as well. In other words, as X increases forever, Y will also increase forever. And on the left end, X can decrease. We can decrease our X values forever. So as X approaches negative infinity, remember here, right? On the side of your curve, always on the side of your curve that gets close to the X axis, your Y is gonna be y approaches zero. So as x approaches positive infinity, y approaches positive infinity. And as x approaches negative infinity, we move to the left, y approaches zero. All right, now let's take a look at a decreasing negative exponential function. So a decreasing negative exponential function is going to have as our a value a negative number. So for a negative exponential function, our a value needs to be a negative number. In other words, a needs to be less than zero, but our b value still needs to be a number greater than one in order to have a decreasing negative exponential function. So let's go ahead and work this out and take a look at what happens here. Again, pause and try to fill out this table on your own. Now, as you work this out, I hope you realize that this function is actually very similar to the last example we did. The only difference is our a value is a negative three instead of a positive three. So the numbers here are, are actually the same, except they're negative. So where x is negative one, f of x or y is gonna be negative 0.75. And where x is zero, y will be negative three where x is one, y will be negative 12, and where x is two, y will be negative 48. So let's go ahead and graph these. Where x is negative one, y is negative 0.75, so this is negative one. Now these are counting by tens, so negative 0.75 is still gonna be very close to the x-axis, all right? Where x is zero, y is negative three, so that'll be about here. Where x is 1, y is negative 12. So if this is negative 10, negative 12 will be just a little bit past there. And where x is 2, y is negative 48. So if this is negative 40, this is negative 50, negative 48 is going to be just a little bit before negative 50. And so here is our curve. And I always have a hard time drawing these curves. Just draw them as smoothly as you can. It should be a smooth curve, but again, you get the idea here.
Now let's go ahead and describe the graph of this function. Again, so let's first take a look at what happens when we increase our x values, when we move off to the right. In this case, when we increase our x values, our y values are actually decreasing. So we write that like this. As x approaches positive infinity, what happens to y? Well, y is going to decrease forever, so y approaches negative infinity. And on the left end, we see that we could keep decreasing our x values, so that would be as x approaches negative infinity. And as I told you, on the end of the curve where you're getting closer and closer to the x-axis, then what you write for y is y approaches zero. All right, now let's look at an example graphing decreasing positive exponential functions. So remember, in order to be a positive exponential function, our a value needs to be a positive number. We see here that it's two. Remember that a needs to be greater than zero. And how, what kind of numbers do you multiply by where the answers actually get smaller? And those would be decimals or fractions less than one. So in order to have a decreasing positive exponential function, our a value needs to be a positive number, a number greater than zero, and our b value needs to be a number in between zero and one. So a number greater than zero, but less than one, like 0 0.4. Now again, I recommend that you pause the video and try to fill out this table on your own. Now feel free to use the exponent function on your scientific calculator to fill this out. But I wanted to show you something because I know that students tend to shy away from fractions, but sometimes, believe it or not, fractions are actually easier. Take here where x is negative 1. So this would be 2 times 0 0.4 to the negative first power. Well, if I write 0 0.4 as a fraction, which 0 0.4 as a fraction is 2 fifths, this is going to look like this. 2 times 2 fifths to the negative first power. And we know that the negative first power is the reciprocal. So this becomes 2 over 1 times 5 over 2. And when I cross simplify, I see that this equals 5. So 2 times 0.4 to the negative first power equals 5. Now we can go ahead and fill out the rest of this table. Anything to the 0 power equals 1. So 2 times 1 equals 2. 2 times 0.4 to the first power is 2 times 0.4, which is 0.8. And 2 times 0 0.4 to the second power is 0.32. So let's go ahead and graph that. Negative 1, 5. So this is negative 1, 5 is right here. 0, 2. Remember, that's our y-intercept, 0, 2. 1, 0.8. So if this is 1, 0.8 is going to be just under that. And 2, 0 0.32, 0 0.32 is going to be less than half, right? So about here. And so this, will I hit any of the points? Yeah. This is our curve right here. And again, pardon my missing of the points, but you get the idea. Try your best to hit the points as you draw your curve. So let's go ahead and describe the behavior of this graph. Again, looking on the right end, as we continue to increase our x values forever, what's happening to this curve? It's actually getting closer to the x-axis, right? So as x approaches positive infinity, y approaches 0. And on the left end, as we decrease our x values forever, our y values are actually increasing. So as x approaches negative infinity, y approaches positive infinity. All right, so our last example here is an increasing negative exponential function. So again, it's a negative exponential function, which means our a value, negative 3, is less than 0. It's a negative number. And just like in the last example, 
in order to have an increasing negative exponential function, our b value needs to be a decimal or fraction in between 0 and 1. So our b value needs to be greater than 0, but less than 1. So go ahead, pause the video, and fill out this table. So if you filled out your table correctly, you should have where x is negative 1, y is negative 7.5. Where x is 0, y is negative 3. That's our y-intercept. Where x is 1, y is negative 1.2. And where x is 2, y is negative 0.48. So now let's go ahead and graph this. So where x is negative 1, y is negative 7.5. So here's negative 1, and negative 7.5 is right here in between negative 6 and negative 9. Where x is 0, y is negative 3. That's right here. Where x is 1, y is negative 1.2. So this would be negative 1 and a half, right? So negative 1.2 would be maybe around here. And where x is 2, y is negative 0.48. So around here. And so let's see if I do an OK job with this curve. Yeah, I think this is my best one out of all of them. So now let's go ahead and describe the behavior of the graph. If we look at the right end, as our x values increase forever, our y values are getting closer and closer to the x-axis. So as x approaches infinity, positive infinity, y approaches 0. And on the left end, as we decrease our x values forever, our y values are also going to decrease forever. So as x approaches negative infinity, y will also approach negative infinity. All right, I hope that this video has helped you to understand how to graph exponential functions.